Hello, Chris. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Live Sport Daily Podcast, and thanks for taking the time. I will start with a question I've always wanted to ask a cycling champion like you. What is going through your head during the race when you are out on a track alone for so many hours? Is there's so much happening in the race? I mean, uh, is there's so many moving parts, especially when you're the leader of a team um, and you think about how you've got to best use the, the guys around you. So, I mean, the, the Tour de France is that I won. It's almost as if you're constantly thinking about you're managing yourself, your own fueling, your 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 strategies, your your opponents. You thinking about how to actually win the race, but you're also thinking about all your teammates, how to best use them and get how to motivate them, how to get the best out of them, to to set things up for yourself. It's it's it's, a, it's always quite a dynamic uh, dynamic. Um, environment that's that's changing very quickly as well with a- any kind of bad luck that might arise along the way, the weather that might change, or um, surprise moves from your rivals as well. So it's it's quite a it's definitely when you're racing, you, you don't have time to to be bored. That's for sure. There's there's a lot going on, and at the end of the day, you've always got someone in your ear as well. So communications back to the car as well. So is there's a lot happening uh, when when we're on the on the mountains there. Now you are in Czech Republic. You are taking a part in a race organized by your friend and former colleague Leo Koenig. How are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm extremely extremely happy to be back back here in the Czech Republic. This is my my second time. Um, I've on I was only here for a few days uh, during the winter in in Prague um, this last year. And uh, I definitely, uh, definitely wanted to come back when it was a bit warmer and to to to, to experience a bit more of the country. So um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, to be to be taking part in this first Czech tour. Were you surprised when you found out that uh, the Czech Republic is a very cycling loving country? Yes, I, when you think of cycling countries, you think of countries like Italy, Spain, France. So. Um, to to come here to the Czech Republic and and to be able to meet so many fans and see how passionate people are about cycling I, it was quite a surprise to me um so um yeah thoroughly thoroughly uh happy to be here and uh getting a chance to to meet uh, some of my my Czech fans in 2019 you suffered a serious injury when you crashed uh, your bike into a wall how challenging was it for you to get back on the bike your body the bones have to heal you can't do anything to to speed speed up the the bone healing and um you just have to be patient so it was it was quite frustrating i think as an athlete because i i wanted to train harder i wanted to to do more but there was almost no more i could do um in terms of uh, getting getting back to to a competitive level again, it it just the body just needed time to to heal. Last year, you finished third on uh, one of the Tour de France stages. Uh, did it prove to yourself that uh, you are still able to get a big result? I think la- last year was definitely a, a really big step for me, getting to the Tour de France and uh, finishing third on probably the Queen stage of the race, uh, finishing on on Alpe d'Huez. So that that was a a big boost for, for my uh, confidence and basically to to show me that I was on the on the right track to to coming back to 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 a good level of racing. Um, unfortunately, the the build up to the Tour de France this year didn't didn't uh, yeah I, I didn't have the same uh, same progression. I guess um, I uh, nevertheless I'm. I'm Yeah, happy to be happy to be here racing. Still be ha- happy to be doing what what I enjoy doing, uh, which is racing my bike and uh, everything that everything that comes with it. So um, even though I didn't race in the tour this year, I'm still um, still glad I'm I'm here racing and uh, l- looking looking forward to to next the next season already and uh, what what that looks like. By the way, how far in advance uh, did you find out that uh, your team didn't nominate you for this year's Tour de France? It was only uh, it was only in the week before that I found out. That must have been uh, difficult to process, wasn't it? 
Yeah, that was that was tough. That was tough. I felt as if I was ready. I felt as if I had uh, I'd worked hard. Uh, so uh, yeah, that was that was a a big disappointment, big disappointment for me. But that's uh, that's life. That's uh, sport. And I think as an athlete, you just have to get on with it and uh, refocus on on something else and uh, continue continue working in the right direction. How do you feel about the winner of the last two years of Tour de France, uh, Jonas Wingegord? Um, can he match you to win the Tour even four times? <laughs> I mean, um, if he carries on the way he did this year, I, I don't see anything stopping him. Uh, I mean, this year he was just he didn't he didn't put a foot wrong throughout the race. So, um, extremely impressive uh, ride by him. He. Um, I think what what was most impressive. I mean, what he could do, what what he did in the mountains was was amazing. But I think what he did in the time trial was just spectacular. Um, I mean, to be beating um, other pure time trialists and, and guys who are really strong in time trial, guys like uh, Van Aert, um by by minutes. Uh, that that was uh, quite quite a performance. You won your first uh, Tour de France ten years ago. Uh, how has uh, cycling changed since then? I think cycling has become a lot more data driven, um, a lot more calculated. Um, I think um, the level of the, the way people train has become um, a lot more structured as well. Um, I think in general the level is higher. Um, but I, 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 I'm not sure so much about the level at the very top, if that level has got higher or if the general level of the sport has increased, that is more people, um, able to, to go further into the race. Both Pogacar and Vingegaard, uh, who are now considered the best cyclist, started uh, gaining success at a very young age. Is this a change that a cyclist uh, mature earlier? I think that's that's largely largely due to the amount of data available. I think the the years that I was winning, sort of thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, I think a lot of that data um, and and data from from people racing with me and alongside me, um, I think that data was has has been shared with 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 coaches and coaches who are working with the younger generation. I think. It then allowed riders of the ages of sort of 15, 16 to almost be training like a Tour de France winner already. And that's why we're seeing now guys turning professional at the age of 19, 20. And they've already got the grounding and the, the ability to be able to win a Tour de France in, in their early 20s. Whereas I, I certainly know when, when I turned professional at the age of 24, it took me a good four or five years of, of, of just having this structure to then be able to be successful. Whereas I think guys are getting that structure so much earlier now at the age of 15, 16 already. So when they're in their early 20s, they're, they're ready to go. Are you trying to be a role model, maybe even a mentor for your young teammates? I certainly hope that I've, I've got, uh, yeah, that Uh, especially all, all the all the training camps we do together with the younger guys that uh I certainly hope that I can I can add value in that in that sense to the team that uh having having been there having uh won won the biggest races in the world to be able to share what I've learned the mistakes I've made along the way um but um yeah most of the young guys on our team are really really smart and seem to have uh, a lot of the the answers already so um i i i can just help where i can and um yeah for the rest i think they they have to experience themselves you have often said that you dream of winning the tour de france for the fifth time is this dream still alive for you it's it's still there for me right at the back of my mind somewhere i mean it's uh, realistic i know it's going to be extremely hard to to achieve with with the younger guys of of today's generation um but yeah i mean the dream is is always there for me and um i would never until until i retire um that's what's still going to be there uh burning burning the fire for me
And finally, the last question, I don't know if it's a difficult or easy one for you. Uh, what's the one thing uh, you love most about cycling? One thing I love about cycling. It's just the just the feeling of of freedom, of being there's nothing there's nothing like it. To me that when you get out on a bike, you get into nature in the middle of nowhere and you just have this feeling of openness and it's it's therapeutic uh, and it's what will always keep bringing me back to the bike i think even beyond my career um i think that's what what uh, what will always keep me keep me riding a bike chris thanks again for your time and for the interview it was really a pleasure to meet you thank you i appreciate that thank you